Hello everyone, it's been a while since the last video, I know that, but unfortunately I don't have enough footage to make a War on 2 or a War on 0 episode, but I have enough footage to make half an episode of each of them, so I think that's what this video is going to be, because I really want to release a video at this point, so so this video will have three parts, the War on 0, War on 2, and then I'll also talk about some of the changes to the channel, some updates about my hand in case you're curious, and that's about it really, so uh, I guess we should start with the V2, there is a bit more progress on that, then we'll move on to the War on 0, and then we'll move on to the uh, stuff I just mentioned. Now, a lot of the footage was shot uh, for uh, proper episodes, so as a result you might notice me saying in this episode or blah blah blah, and well, as I said, that's because the footage was shot for an episode, but I'm making this uh, weird hybrid video, so uh, yeah, don't get confused, I guess that's it, so let's begin with the War on 2. Hello everyone, today we're going to work on the War on 2 sprint problems, we're going to figure out what's going on, and uh, we're also going to work on the bottom chamber, the skirts. I actually printed most of the skirts, I think I think all of the bottom skirts in fact, so they're here. We're going to mount those and that's especially important because these feet that I printed on the War on Zero back then, uh, they had poor layer additions so or they keep cracking, so I definitely need to replace those, so yeah, yeah we're going to do that. And uh, if the PCBs are here in time, which uh, they should be, if nothing else goes wrong, uh, we're also going to work on the PCBs. So uh, I talked about this before, I'm going to replace the PCB behind the bed with a different one, and I'm going to add a top PCB. And I'm also going to remove the 5V and the 12V power supplies from the bottom electronics chamber, because they're not needed anymore. And uh, we'll also see from there, I want to do a bit more, but uh, I don't know right now. But the primary thing is to get this thing working again. I don't know what was wrong with it, as I said before, so... Uh, yeah, I guess let's start with the bottom skirts, because that's the easiest thing to fix. And so, uh, one more thing I wanted to show is these. I don't know if I talked about this or not, I don't think I did though. These are supposed to be latches, so if you remember the front door, I was using some of this uh, PVC stuff to keep it in place and... It just made the door really difficult to open, so uh, yeah, changed my mind on that and went with these latches. These are a bit large for 2020 extrusions, but they still work because I have the additional spice next to it. These have these uh, balls and there's a spring behind that, and that's the mechanism. And you wouldn't think that would work very well, because it actually does require a decent amount of force to keep the door in place. Because I'm still using the PVC sealant here and that... Uh, obviously I have to push that in and yeah it takes a bit of force but actually works so I'm pretty happy with how these work so I'll be using those and uh, another thing showed these uh, th this time uh, matte black channel covers before I'm going to apply that to the rest of the printer because I think that looks pretty good so uh, anyway those are minor details so uh, yeah let's start with the bottom electronics chamber with the removal of the power supplies and uh, new skirts and this is what I was talking about with weak parts, and uh, there were many many more bef before that as well, so yeah, I'm going to replace them all. Remove the two unnecessary power supplies, the 5V and the 12V one, and finish the bottom electronics. So uh, yeah, this is how it looks like in terms of the electronics, not much change, just remove the two power supplies that I don't need anymore. But the uh, skirts are installed now as well, as you can see. And I also installed the bottom panel, so no more actually risking touching this when reaching below the printer for a tool or something. I tend to keep them there, even though it's a stupid idea. So yeah, now the protection is there as well. And I think the panel looks pretty nice. I showed these a few episodes ago, so I'm going to repeat this. This is just acrylic and it's laser cut with handles as well, just to make removing this easier. And it's held in there by just the feet themselves. So. Uh, single M6 screw in that feet and not is in built into the feet so that's how it look uh, that's how it works so yeah pretty happy how pretty happy with how this turned out unfortunately I did have some warped parts that I forgot about but yeah I guess I can replace that down the line that's the front one there is another one warped I think it was this middle one for some reason the middle ones warped I don't know what's specific to them but uh, anyway I think it still works pretty well and I said works, I meant looks, and um, yeah, I'm going to replace this one and this one uh, at some point, but um, yeah, again, pretty happy with how this looks, so 
uh, time to move on to something else. And what that is, is, well, I guess we'll see in a bit. It's been uh, about a month since what you just saw in this video. You know what happened, it's my hand, but uh, yeah, uh, now I can start uh, thinking about continuing the project and by the time you're seeing this video, I obviously did some progress. But uh, anyway, I want to show the new replacement uh, panel for the top. So if you remember, I, the old top panel wasn't cut that well. And if we take a look at this picture, for example, there we go. You can see the gaps around the motors and that was because I didn't cut it properly. I didn't space it properly. I didn't measure it properly, sorry. So uh, there were some problems with that. Plus with the Nevermore, I need a hole around here. And I also want a hole for the umbilical. I want a hole for the drag chain for the A and B motors and the limit switches. And I need a bunch of mounting holes for the Nevermore uh, Max air filter, the Enrage with Project Carrot Feeder, the electronics, etc. So it just made sense to order a laser cut piece. Or I already showed this in an earlier video, but uh, now I'm going more into the details of this. So basically, there are, uh, if I get rid of the grill, there are uh, three holes for the Nevermore Max air filter. This is the intake, these two are exhausts, and yeah, that's how it's going to work. The air will be pulled in here. I have this piece I designed and mounted to the Nevermore Max air filter and uh, that means I'm bypassing the chamber behind that so it will just pull into the uh, chamber with uh, active carbon pellets and it will be filtered through that, then HEPA filters and it will be pushed out here using the 5015 fans. So that's the design with that and these uh, six holes are for mounting that. Here these two and these two are for mounting the and never, not never, Max, the Enraged Rabbit Project Carrot Feeder, the MMU2 type unit. And uh, yeah, you can see how that's going to work. And obviously, with a lot of that, I will have to uh, just uh, tap the holes in the plate so that I can actually screw the M3 screws in. But uh, that's relatively easy. And this is, well, Fusion 360 being a buggy mess, but it's actually like this with the electronics mounted to it. So it's an L-shaped bracket, it has three screws that will go to that panel and this will position the electronics above the Nervmore Max air filter and um, yeah, you can see the custom PCB which will be here, not here and that will run to the back through this hole to the bottom electronics chamber for power and well the spider will be here and the spider will have some connections to the Raspberry Pi which is mounted behind the display since there is a mounting location for that on the official Raspberry Pi display. So um, yeah, that's how this is going to work. And the... Uh, yeah, the as I said, Fusion is a buggy mess, but behind the bed there will be this, definitely this size PCB and that will also run to this PCB that will be here, and that's for the signals to the uh, that's for the signals for the uh, thermistor on the bed, the PT1000 I'm using for chamber temperature. The maybe I'm not 100% sure if I'm actually going to use it or not, but maybe the BME680 for uh, chamber temperature, humidity, and Vox the stuff in the air that's bad for you. And yeah, measuring stuff like that, maybe that as well, and the Z limit switch obviously, they will all, all run to this PCB. The reason I'm going with a PT1000, not a PT100, is the spider board actually has a decent resistor on the thermistor input, so you can actually use PT1000s with it, with uh, pretty good accuracy, so uh, there is no... There is no need for the max 31 865 based PT100 systems anymore with the uh, yeah, spider board, so... Yeah, I'm going with the PT-1000 for the chamber temperature and I'm going to replace the PT-100 in the Dragon Hatan with a PT-1000 as well. But with the Tiny M and with the Warum Zero, I'm sticking with PT-100s because that's not an option with them. So uh, anyway, that's the design. And the, this aluminum plate is already here. I have to sand it, tap it, and then we will mount it. And that's the next Daft Punk song. Only if they still uh, made music, I could sell that to them. Anyway. So here is the new panel, I sanded it and tapped it as I said, so this is how it looks. It was kind of difficult to t uh, sand this one-handed, so 
Uh, yeah, it's not the greatest sanding job ever, but most of it will be covered by stuff on this anyway. The Enrage Habit Project Carrot Feeder, the Nevermore Max Air Filter, uh, electronics and cables and whatever. So, uh, yeah, I think it's good enough. The next step is to apply the insulation on the bottom side here. Uh, kind of difficult to film, but you can see that I didn't sand that side because it will be covered by the insulation. And uh, after that, we'll have to fix this in place, mount the Z motors back because I had to remove them to actually insert the panel here because you can see there is not enough cl uh, clearance here for the motors themselves. And uh, yeah, I guess we'll see from there. Eventually, we will need the new skirts on the top. The skirts actually have a functional purpose as well. They keep the panel in place. They extend beyond here, like about here or so and that keeps the panel in place i'll also need the rubber tape on this i have two millimeter thick ones that i can use and that's because this is four millimeters thick but the spacing on these is five millimeters and that is that was intentional i went with four millimeters here because the rest of the panels that i used are also four millimeters but uh, yeah i'll need that but shouldn't be a problem so uh anyway i guess i'll get to the insulation and i'll probably mount the ratio project and nevermore max on this as well I modified the Nevermore Max slightly and the modification is these two microfit connectors. Uh, the reason I did this is because when I was printing this I got rid of the PCB that was in here. It was a clipper expander. I didn't really want that. I didn't want to uh, overcomplicate things since I can't control the fans through the spider board. But uh, that also means that I need a way of routing the wires out of here. And I didn't design that. I just sawed off uh, two holes for these and just slid them in they are now super glued in place and did the wiring to the fence and uh, yeah that's all I did and I uh, also mounted the Nevermore Max air filter the Enrage Habit Project carrot feeder also remounted the Z drives I had to remove them for uh, clearance for mounting the panel so um, yeah this is how it looks from the top and from the bottom as I said not much different it's just the insulation but uh, from the top, you can obviously see the new aluminium, but uh, I think it looks still uh, pretty good. Doing this took me like a week to do this. Obviously, my hand is slowing me down. I probably shouldn't do this in the first place, but anyway, here it is. One thing I had to do is I had to get rid of the heat sinks on the Z stepper motors because of the clearance for the uh, not Enrage project, the Nevermore Max air filter. You can see that. Well, it's transparent, so I don't know how much you can see, but. I can't fit my finger there, it's that close, so uh, yeah, I had to remove them, the heat sinks from these uh, two Z motors. The other two, there is enough room, but uh, just, just to keep uh, things symmetrical, I got rid of them. So anyway, here we will have the L-shaped bracket that I described. A small change to the CAD model will be uh, made because I need clearance for these uh, microfit connectors that I use on the Nevermore Max air filter but uh, should be relatively easy to do especially since I had to modify that anyway if I want to print that on the Voron Zero which at the moment isn't even working yet by the way I don't know if this V2 or the V0 uh, video goes live first I'm not sure well that's it for the updates on the Voron 2 I need to get the Voron Zero working to print the next parts but the Voron Zero has its own set of problems so I guess we should move on to that Hello everyone and welcome to the next episode of the Voron Zero series. In the last episode, this is the state we left the Voron Zero in. I couldn't do any more progress because I was waiting for these parts and now they're here so we can uh, finish the pr printer and uh, also get it working and I guess we'll see from there what we can do. I was basically waiting for these bearings because uh, the uh, two titers that we were using before in the Voron 0.0 well, we, the design team replaced that with bearings because there were problems with the bearings inside those two sidlers. So, um, yeah, I'm going to do that, do the same thing as well. So I had to wait for these because I was short four bearings as a result. And also had to wait for a bunch of uh, screws with the current version of the Voron 0, 0 0.1. There are these countersunk screws that we have to use. Not really sure. I'm not really sure where, but... Um, yeah, that's in the bomb, so I had to order that and more M2x6s because I stripped a lot of them and the 
uh, shims that we have to use with the uh, bearings so they're all now here so we can as i said finish the printer also uh, since the last episode i showed this in a different video as well but now i have the pcb that sits between the motors here i'll put a picture of that on the screen right now but uh, it's a replacement to this so i already removed this this was the plate back there and um, I don't think this looks really that great in there, so I'm going to design some sort of a cover for this. When I made the video with this PCB, I said I was going to design a 3D printed one, and that could be an option. Another option would be to design something that can be laser cut, again, in aluminium, and I think that will match the color of the printer better, so I'm leaning towards that, but uh, yeah, we'll see if I can design something decent or not. Also I have the PT100 here, I didn't have that at the time, but this is from Triangle Lab, I was waiting for another order from them. So this is for the chamber temperature. So this one, and if I end up using a PT100 on the tool head, the hot end, that one as well will run to the Duet Wi-Fi's daughter board with two Max Z1 A65s. But um, yeah, I guess we'll see. The, currently the initial setup with the hot end, it will just use a thermistor, but uh, yeah, we'll see down the line. And uh, and the 18 pin connector here will run to the breakout on the tool head. So I guess that's all I wanted to show. So uh, let's get to building this. The rest of the build was uneventful and I finished it. And you might have seen it in a previous video on the channel. And then I moved on to the PCB and the cover for that and the cable for that. And the first thing I did was the cable since I was waiting for the laser cut pieces, which I designed on Fusion 360 like usual. I made this cable. Now it is wrapped in uh, Tessa tape as well, but uh, you can see it naked here. Basically, two thicker heater wires and the rest of them are 22 gauge FEP wires. It will run from the motor plate uh, PCB to the tool head PCB. The laser cut pieces I ordered are here as well. I covered the top one's bottom side with electrical tape and I also covered the back side of the PCB with electrical tape as well, just in case there are some shorts. I mean, I did design some uh, space between the uh, aluminium plate and the PCB so it shouldn't be a problem but this is something I did just in case and the other two pieces are the spacers themselves and uh, yeah that lets me space the PCB below the uh, plate itself so that's the idea with that and if you're curious this is around the time where my hand got injured and I'll talk about that more later in the video but sh I decided to put this in here just for uh, just to make the video chronological I guess but I'll talk more about that at the end of the video. And you can see that I mounted the PCB with the new laser cut panels and also connected the cable and ran the Bowden tube as well to the backside. I used the clean Bowden tube I had just because it uh, looks cool in my opinion, but uh, whatever, it should do the same job. And it will run in the back chamber to the side and exit to where the spool holder feet is, so it will connector and yeah the spool, uh, the spool holder will be in the back for now eventually i'll probably design a top mount of spool holder just like i did with the Voron 0.0 but uh, for now that's the way it's going to run and that's it for the assembly so we can move on to testing the printer uh, redoing the firmware i need to change a lot of settings so i'll probably going to s uh, start from scratch which also will allow me to switch back to octoprint i like octoprint more than moonraker base a uh, guise i talked about that before so i'll do that uh, redo the clipper firmware from scratch and start our first print well i really try to release the next episode of the war on zero series this week uh, today being the 19th, so uh, on 20th, but uh, it's not going to happen. I'm not going to release it without uh, at least one proper finished print. The problem is uh, there is something wrong with the extruder mechanism, and well, it prints a bit. Sometimes uh, more than this, I just threw the rest of them away. So anyway, it's uh, maybe sometimes a little taller than this, but not much taller than this. And then the extruder stops and uh, yeah, the print obviously resumes, but nothing actually prints. So there could be two problems that I have in mind. One of them is uh, since the Boron 2, which I printed these parts on at the time was printing pretty badly. Maybe there are some tolerances that are off or maybe some zits or blobs or, you know, stuff like that, that I can't see that's causing the print quality problems. 
I obviously did inspect the parts and didn't find anything, but that is still a possibility in my mind. Another possible problem is with the motor plate on the extruder. I had to increase the current of the extruder, so extruder motor that is, and uh, that obviously points to a problem with the uh, extruder. Again, could be print quality, but uh, another result of that is the extruder motor runs really hot and it's hot enough to actually warp the part that the motor mounts to. So uh, yeah, you can see that it's slightly warped here. Now I don't know if that's going to have a significant effect on the print, but since the one of the, the shafts for the extruder also mount to this plate, and since this is bending, maybe that's causing the gear of that to misalign or touch some of the sides or whatever. That's something I uh, that's a possibility in my mind. So I don't know, but for both of the problems I mentioned, the solution is simple: it's just getting new parts. But as I said, I don't have a working 3D printer, so uh, just like I did with the Warrant 2, I ordered these parts in MJF, and they will be here soon. Uh, trademark. It's been over a week, but yeah, yeah, they should be here at some point. Now obviously MJF is a waste on this printer, especially because I'm not planning to turn this printer into a high temperature printer, but uh, you know, it's something I wanted to do for fun, I guess. Since the Warrant 2 is like this, it would be fun to match it with he with this printer here as well. And as I said, it doesn't really matter. So I ordered them in MJF. And actually another reason is, uh, since the motor is running hot and that's warping that plate, if that is printed in a high temperature material, then it won't warp and I won't have this problem. But obviously there are cheaper alternatives to that. I could just get FDM printed nylon or whatever, since I'm ordering online anyway. But uh, yeah, that's what I did. So I'm waiting for those parts. I was hoping they would be here by now, but they're not. So that's the situation with the War on Zero at the moment. And that's why this is a half episode, but uh, stay tuned for that. With the Voron Zero running, I should be able to print the rest of the parts I need for the Voron 2 and uh, finish that build. And with that uh, build finished, I will print the rest of the parts for the Tiny M and finish that. So, uh, yeah, hopefully, I don't decide to do some other weird mod uh, modding adventure while uh, on I only have one working printer and then modify it like I've been doing because I'm an idiot. But, uh, yeah, I don't think I will. So uh, anyway, so that's the situation with the Voron Zero. Now it's for the third part of this video, which is uh, my hand. I know uh, some people care, so I thought I should update you on that. But just as a warning, this will probably be a rambly mess. But uh, you know, if you're a regular viewer of this channel, I'm sure you're used to that. But um, yeah, let's get to it. I will also talk about some of the changes that are coming to the channel. But uh, yeah, I'll start with my hand because uh, that's probably easier to get out of the way. And uh, as I said in that video, I've been to a doctor, and since that video, I had my EMG as well, which uh, turned out I uh, found a problem. Uh, my ulnar nerve, which travels through the cubital tunnel in my elbow, is damaged, and I think I'm not great at reading the EMG, but I think there is some damage on the radial nerve as well. But uh, yeah, the, the problem is with in my elbow, and I don't know how I managed to hurt it, but because I didn't hit it anywhere or anything like that, but um, yeah, I somehow did, and that's causing the problem. Uh, the doctor said it should start healing uh, in a few weeks or a month at the latest. It's been over a month and it hasn't healed at all, but I don't know, maybe it's healing really, really slowly, I'm not, and I'm not feeling it, but uh, anyway. She also said that it would take about a year for it to fully heal, which is a long time, but she also said I should be able to start using my hand uh, more or less in a few months, uh, and yeah, it will be weak, but I will be able to use it, and so far, as I said, not much changed, I can't even squeeze a tube of toothpaste, for example, so... Uh, anyway, that's the update on that. She said I should visit her in three months if it doesn't heal at all, which uh, hopefully isn't the case because she said that means I need surgery and I don't want to have surgery in COVID times, but uh, yeah, I guess we will see. But in the meantime, this is obviously having an effect on the content I'm releasing on the channel because as I said, I can't really work in the workshop and even doing uh, videos with just voiceover are a problem. Obviously my voice is fine, but a lot of the voiceover videos I make are scripted, not this current bit, but a lot of them are, and that uh, is kind of difficult to write a script with one hand working, so 
Anyway, I guess that's just whining at that point, but uh, yeah, it, it is still having an effect. And uh, as a result of that, as you know, I wasn't able to release a video for about a month, but I think going from here, I'll try to release a video every two weeks until I can increase it to a video a week, and then I can increase it to two videos a week. But um, yeah, it will probably be a video every two weeks or something like that or the uh, near future. Because, uh, as I said, it really takes a long time to do anything in the workshop. For example, just screwing in one screw. <laughs> I, I look ridiculous doing it, but uh, I have to hold the tip of the screwdriver and the screw with my right hand. And then apply pressure to the screwdriver using my chin. And then rotate the screwdriver with the working fingers on my left hand. And, <laughs> you know, it's ridiculous. And I can't do soldering, because ideally you'd want six hands to do soldering. You only have two, and it's difficult enough with two. With one, I can't do it at all. So, uh, some things I can't do. Other things, it just takes way too long. And uh, yeah, that's the result of this, I guess. So, uh, as I said, two videos, uh, a video every two weeks until I can increase it. And uh, yeah, we'll see from there. Also, I've received a few messages on Discord and I think one YouTube comment as well, asking if there is, if this is having any effect on uh, my monetary situation my income i mean it is having an effect but actually i'm making more money not making videos so that's not the case i enjoy working on the 3d printers or making videos or stuff like that it's a fun hobby for me i am monetizing the channel but uh, i'm spending way more than i'm making normally so um, yeah it's the opposite way around i just enjoy making videos that's why i make them and yes it did have an effect i lost about half of the YouTube revenue and a decent amount of the Patreon and most of AliExpress revenue so it did have an effect but as I said I don't really care about that this is mostly about making videos and those are uh, ways for me to fund the projects not to make a living so uh, don't worry about that aspect of things there is also a possibility of a move coming up in the next few months and that would normally have a negative effect on the channel or the content that is but if I'm making a video every two weeks or something like that it shouldn't have a big effect on the content because it actually gives me a few video ideas that I could make without hurting my hand because uh, actually a lot of the reasons why I can't do many voiceover videos is ideas but yeah, I'll get to that, I should finish the move topic so uh, yeah, I don't think that will have a negative effect on the channel, which as I said, would normally I would expect it to have a negative effect on the content. I can probably make uh, updates on the workshop, working on a new workshop in the new place uh, when my stuff arrives there, which will take a while because it would be an international move. But uh, yeah, just uh, videos about that topic, will, I think it I can make a decent amount of videos from that and I think it will also be pretty interesting because uh, if you've seen my workshop I mean not to sound uh, yeah, I can't think of the word but whatever I, I think I built a great workshop there and I'm very proud of it so I think I can build something even better there and I think it will be pretty interesting and if you're curious about my current workshop there is a tour video on the channel so if you're interested in that you can check it out I'll put a uh, link to that in the description below so I don't think the move will have a negative impact on the channel, but uh, it's just something that will happen over the next few months. Well, not for sure, but a good chance of it happening anyway. And I will be moving to the US if you're wondering, but I don't know what state yet. So uh, yeah, that's the update on that. And lastly, as I mentioned, I can't come up with video ideas, so uh, I should quickly mention that as well. So, uh, as I said, uh, my hand prevents me from making a lot of progress in the workshop, unfortunately, but obviously I could make voiceover videos, and I did try, but... Uh, yeah, one thing I said was I wasn't able to script them, but uh, I mean, I can with my one hand at least, but the other problem is I can't come up with uh, new ideas. A lot of the topics that I can think of that can be covered in a voiceover-only fashion, uh, I think I've covered them all. And if in the past, when I was releasing a two, uh, two videos a week, if I skipped a Monday video, that usually was the reason, the fact that I couldn't come up with a video idea. So that's a part of the problem. Uh, if I can come up with stuff, there will be more video on the channel. But, but uh, yeah, I don't know right now. But uh, yeah, if you have anything, you can leave in the comments down below if you, if you have any ideas that can be covered only as a voiceover. So 
uh, yeah, that's that. So I think that's everything I wanted to mention in this video. So uh, in two weeks, hopefully, I should be able to release a new video. I also have the ZD915 desoldering gun review uh, ready. I just need to record the voiceover and edit it. But I didn't release it yet because I wanted to add this bit to the end of the video and that doesn't really fit in a review video plus most people won't care about that. I just know the statistics so uh, yeah, the people who are regular viewers of the channel, uh, some of you will be interested in this stuff so I wanted to be this to be at the end of a video that you will care about so uh, yeah ZD915 review I'll probably eventually release it as well as I said just need to do the voiceovers and edit it so uh, yeah I think now that's the end of this video so hope you still enjoyed it I'll try to release a new video in two weeks and we'll see from there as I said I'll try to increase it down the line but uh, yeah I keep rambling so that's it thanks for watching